This is a garden in a bottle or an airtight florarium. The plants within this bottle are alive, but they really don't need water. They generate all the water they need on their own. 150 years ago, a man named Ord shipped ferns from India to Europe and similar bottles and glass jars. That's how florariums became popular in Victorian Britain. Why did they do that? So that it would reach its destination? Yes, so that the plants would survive the long sea voyage. How does it work? Due to photosynthesis, a plant receiving sunlight generates oxygen. Water evaporating from the surface of the leaves remains inside the glass jar. The withering leaves turn into fertilizer, thus creating a self-sustaining biosphere. However, there is a caveat. The glass jar accumulates a lot of moisture. That is why only hydrophilus plants can survive in these conditions. Another thing is that those systems, although proven, can't last long. Finally, a plant can also die due to a genetic process. Nothing lasts forever. Plants can shrink in size and may eventually shrink to a size where existence is no longer possible due to a lack of physiological mechanisms within it. There are other secrets. Florariums are produced with a sufficient amount of hydrogel. It acts as a water reserve for long periods of time. Soil, fertilizers, and pesticides are also supplemented with growth inhibitors. They slow down the natural processes in a way, slightly preserving the plants. So who would use those plants and how? I think the new generations might like the idea because there is a very little vegetation left in the cities. So it would be nice to have an illustration of how nature can fully take care of itself right in front of one's eyes or rather with minimum interference. It would also be good for people allergic to some plants, those who can't grow flowers at home. It is also a good solution for people who have pets who can chew on plants growing in pots. And lastly, it is perfect for scatterbrains.